A while back I made a video about making this cylinder grid. It's using a concept that some people call recursive subdivision, and I first saw it in one of Mantis's videos. If you like my videos, you'll probably love that channel too. To explain what recursive subdivision is all about, I'll show you how to do it without geometry nodes, and then we'll use geonodes in 3.0 and talk about some of the limitations. Then we'll use version 3.1 and create this sci-fi grid with some of the new features. If you want the project file I make in this video, you can find that on Patreon, as well as coupon codes for free Gumroad products and a bunch of other files that I don't share anywhere else. I also donate some of the profits to environmental causes each month. Link is in the description. All right, let's get started. All right, so here we are in Blender version 3.0. Uh, to get started, I'm just gonna show you how to do this without geometry nodes, the way that I first learned how to do it. So we'll start with a plane, shift A to add in a plane right here. Then we'll tab into edit mode, and I just wanna subdivide this. So right click, subdivide, and we can set the number of cuts to however big we want the faces to be. So I'll set mine to three, so we have uh, four faces going across. We need to split the edges, so you can come up here to edge select right here. Select everything, right click, and then edge split. And that will make it so that when you're in face select mode right here, you can actually separate each face there. None of them are connected. Now hit Alt A to deselect everything. Come up here to select and go to select random. So now you can set the ratio, you know, how, how many of these are actually being selected. This is roughly half. So we can just right click and subdivide. So that's our first iteration. And we basically just wanna do all of those steps over and over again until the faces are as small as we want. So once again, select everything and then edge select up here, right click, edge split, go back up to face select, deselect everything and select random and then subdivide. And we can just keep doing this over and over again until the level of detail is where we want it. Okay, so I did this a few times and now you can see we have like a pretty complex grid right here. So now you can do pretty much whatever you want with this. All of these should be uh, separated if you did the edge split. Um, so you could just select everything in face select mode, press period to change the pivot point to individual origin. You could scale these down if you want so they're actually separated and then extrude them up like that. So this works fine, obviously. You can see I just made something and it, it didn't take me too long. So one downside is this is destructive. It's a destructive method, so you can't really like change it if you wanted to get a different pattern or a different level of complexity. You'd pretty much just have to start from the beginning again. So now that we know how to do this, let's just hide it up here. And I'm gonna add in another plane and we're gonna use this for geometry nodes. So now we'll open up a geometry nodes workspace. So if you don't have a button up here, just hit the plus general, and then geometry nodes like that. We can just select that plane and hit the plus button to create a new geometry nodes modifier. So I'm just gonna go into wireframe so we can actually see the topology a little better. And we're gonna keep the group input so that we can change this mesh later if we want. So I'm just gonna subdivide this a few times. I'll, I'll hit shift A and then S to search and subdivide mesh. And this is once again going to be like our biggest faces. And now we'll set up the first uh, recursive subdivision iteration. So basically what we want to get first is a random selection. So to do that, we'll add in a separate geometry right here. We want to separate it based on face. So we change this from point to face like that. And now we need a random selection. We can do that with random value right here. And we just wanna change this from float to Boolean and we can just plug this in. And now it looks like it's deleting half of the faces, but it's actually not. It's splitting it into two separate selections right here. We have the ability to change the probability right here, like how many, uh, you know, how these are being divided. And we have this seed. It's like giving it a random pattern every time. So we don't want this to actually look like it's deleting. So what we can do is bring in a join geometry right here, and we'll just join the selection and the inverted like that. And now we actually have the whole grid, but we have these two separate selections. So now we can just use a subdivide mesh like we did before. So I'll just select that, hit shift D, and I'll add it only to the inverted. And now it's, well, I'll change the level to one. And now it's just selecting half of these and subdividing them. So we can basically just take these nodes and keep doing this over and over again until we get the level of complexity that we want. Um, but instead of just duplicating these, I'm gonna group them to make it a little easier to control. So we're just gonna select all of these and hit Control G and that will group it. You can get in and out of the group by just selecting the group input or output and hitting tab 
you can go back in with tab too. So I want to be able to control the probability and the seed from the outside. So I'll just take this, drag it in there like that. And I also want that on the output too, so that we can, you know, feed these values into other node groups. So I'll just take the probability, send it over to the output, and I'll do the same thing with the seed like that. But I want the seed to be a little different every time, so we're not using the same selection. So I'll just bring in a math node right here and drop it right there. So we're plugging the seed into here, and then, you know, it's going back out. And I'll just add one to this. All right, so I'll tab out, and this is what our node group looks like. So now we should be able to just shift D and duplicate this, and you can just hook these up like that and control everything from the first one like this. Um, I'll just add a few of these in like that, maybe four of them, and just plug all of these in. And now this is the power of geometry nodes. If we want a different pattern, we can just change the seed right here, and we are just getting random patterns every time. So that's pretty cool. Now, if you wanted to do something similar to the way we did it with geometry the first time, you could do that in geometry nodes. And I have a video on how to scale faces down. Geometry nodes is constantly updating. So that's actually a little outdated now. You can still do it with the same method, but in 3.1, once we get there, there's a much easier way. They basically just made a new node that does it all for you. But if you want, you can use other modifiers in combination with the geometry nodes right here. So I'm just going to uh, make sure all of the edges are split before we add any modifiers. And then I'll add a solidify right here. And I'll also add a smooth. And now similar to before, we have a bunch of individual faces like that, except we have the added benefit of being able to change you know, the seed like that and just get a random pattern every time. You can still do a whole lot of things in version 3.0. If you want to see one cool thing you can do, you can check out BBBN 19's video on recursive subdivision. Um, it's pretty similar to this one so far, except he instances objects onto each of the faces. And now let's hop into version 3.1. So I like to use this Blender Launcher. I'll put a link to it in the description. It just helps you uh, manage a bunch of different versions of Blender, and I use it a lot. Okay, so now we're in the 3.1 beta. So the first thing we need for our sci-fi grid is a scale elements right here. And this will allow us to scale each of our faces down however far we want. And this is why I said that the video I made about scaling faces is a little outdated because even though it still does work, um, there's a much easier way now. You can just use this one node. The second node we want to use is an extrude node right here. We can just put that before the scale elements. We can just turn this offset scale down quite a bit. And this is how we're going to create all of our different panels like this. Um, one cool thing about this extrude node is it gives us different selections for the top and the side. So if we wanted to, we could scale down only the top. We can just plug this into the selection right here. And now it will only scale the top down like that. So if you wanted, you could create like a whole bunch of spikes. But I like to set mine to something like 0.9, just so that they separate enough so you can, you know, tell the difference. We can also make each of these panels have a different height randomly based on a texture. So I'll bring in a noise texture right here. We can just plug the factor directly into the offset scale right here. And it'll be a little more clear what this texture actually is if we turn the detail and the scale down quite a bit like that. And then I'll change this to 4D and we can change the W. And this is one cool way you could get like a pretty cool motion graphics scene. We can change the height of these with a map range. So I'll bring in a map range and we can just change these two min and two max values to be our like maximum and minimum. So I'll set this to like 0 0.03 like that. And I'll also turn the scale of our noise texture up quite a bit just so you can see the difference a little better. So it is pretty subtle, but I do think it, it helps with the detail instead of it being completely flat, especially when you start adding lights in here. But if you prefer, you can always, you know, mess with these values. Next, I want to randomly delete some of these panels and we can add in a delete geometry. So if we drop this in right there, everything will just be deleted because we don't have a selection yet. Um, I also want to change this to face because we want to be deleting faces. So for the random selection, we can do the same thing we did for our node groups and bring in a random value and change this to Boolean. Plug this in right there. And now we're getting a random selection right here and we can 
choose how many of these we want to delete. And we also have a random seed for that. So one other thing about our sci-fi grid is that it has this like underlying frame, kind of like a lattice. So what we can do is just take our mesh before we actually delete anything and turn that into a curve. So I'll get a mesh to curve right here and we'll grab the mesh from over here. And if we want, we can preview this um, as long as you have the Node Wrangler installed, I believe. You can preview this with Alt, Shift, and left click. And so this is what we're looking at for our curve right now. And if we wanna give this some thickness, we have to add a curve to mesh because it gives us this profile curve option. And I want the profile to be just rectangular. So I'll bring in a quadrilateral, which is, it's just a rectangle, but it's the, the curved version of it. We can plug that into the profile curve. And then we're gonna wanna turn the width down quite a bit um, so we can actually see what's going on. So I'll just set this to like 0 0.01. And I think that looks okay. If we want, we can add a little more complexity by um, changing the, the radius based on how long each line is. And we can do that pretty easily. We just need a set radius, let's say set curve radius. We drop it in right here. And we can use a spline length. And you can just plug the length directly into the radius right here. Now, if you want, you could use a map range in between here or like a math node set to multiply to change how big and how small each of these is, but I think it's fine as is. Now I wanna join this up with our uh, original mesh over here. So I'll add in a join geometry node right there and we'll plug this in. So now we have these panels that are sitting on top of that lattice. Now, again, if we want, we can change like how many are being deleted and we can change the pattern over here. I think this will work better if we get rid of this split edges right here because you can see we have some some z fighting things going through each other so i'll just select this and hit Control x to dissolve it and that should clear up some of those issues and because we have this set to individual it's extruding our individual faces so one thing that makes geometry nodes so powerful is that um, all of this pattern is contained within this group right here so if we wanted to we could actually come in here and uh, go into edit mode and extrude this you know, it's just matching our mesh now. Um, the only thing is that you can see these ones are kind of squashed and more rectangular. And that's just because the subdivisions are kind of matching the face shape. I think this recursive subdivision works best with quads. It looks a little different if you're using triangles. So I'll just add in a triangulate node right here so you can see what it looks like. I think it's still an interesting effect, but I think it looks best with, uh, with quads. And if you want everything to look square, you can always remesh this. If you do that, I recommend saving first and maybe just muting all of these nodes right here. I'll just uh, select them and hit M to mute them like that. And now we can come over here and add a remesh node. And I would just put that before the geometry nodes like that. And now you can change the maximum face size. So now everything should be a square and we can come in here and just start turning these on one by one until we get the level of complexity that we want. And now this should allow us to make this whatever shape we want and have everything uh, continue to be squares. So I'll just hit this button so we can see it in edit mode. So I'll just come in here and start modeling this a little, give it a little more complex shape. So now we have some, uh, some curved edges, we have some extrusion, um, this is a triangular face, but everything should be keeping pretty rectangular because of this remesh modifier. So if you wanted to add some materials to this, you could just use a set material node. I like to be able to set a different material for the wireframe and for the panels. So you can just put one here and put one there. And we just need two materials now and we can set them over here. And so this could be really cool for making something like a greeble for a spaceship or like a sci-fi corridor or something like that. Um, especially once you start adding lighting and materials. All right, that's it for this one. Once again, you can find this video's project file on my Patreon. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.